This is Andy Purawal for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and for the first time in must be about a year and a half I am delighted to be joined by Francis Warren in all places in Miami. Francis how are you doing? I'm very good, very good thank you, it's good to see you mate. You too, you too, good to catch up obviously we're out here Andrade Williams fight week, talking about the fight, it's a, it's a brilliant fight which I think it's slipped under the radar a little bit for whatever reason. It's probably just, you know, it's the times, isn't it? You know, it's the times we're in because, you know, this is a cracking fight. Um, you know, had this been in, um, in Cardiff or, um, you know, you know, we've gone out and done thousands and thousands of tickets um, you know, with the big support that Liam brings. However, we are here and, um, you yeah, it's good to be here. You know, I'm not going to moan about the weather, definitely not. Um, but, you know, it's all, you know, it's all serious business. I think um, Liam thoroughly deserves his, you know, the, the shot at the title um, that, that he's fighting for on Saturday. No, not underestimating Andrade, but I just don't think that um, Demetrius will know what's hit him on Saturday. Heading into this fight, Demetrius certainly, you know, when it was first announced, played it down a bit. He wasn't kind of as, as vocal and as happy about it because he was looking at a Charlo or Golovkin. That's the type of names he wanted. What are your thoughts on kind of how Demetrius hand, has handled things up until this point? Well, I think he was quite dismissive and disrespectful originally, saying, you know, who is this guy and all that stuff. You know, Conor McGregor's who the fuck is this guy was, you know, that meme was, was being posted quite a bit whenever Liam sort of tried to interact with him um, on social, which I think is it's easy to do and it's quite a flippant reaction to things. But at the end of the day, Liam has boxed his way up the rankings and Liam is in, you know, you know, you don't get to the top of these rankings for... You know, by, by going into tickling competitions, um, you know he's he's, he's fought hard. Um, he's navigated a good route up to the number one spot, and he's the mandatory. And um, you know, and he's gonna he, he deserves to be there. Since I think he, you know Demetrius has well, realised that, that you know since he's obviously the fight was made, I think he's backtrack a little bit. Um, I've seen this week, you know. Liam Williams deserves to be there. I'm going to take him seriously because then I'll go on to bigger and better things. So even in that respect, he's still been slightly disrespectful. But listen, I don't think any of it matters what Demetrius is doing. It's all about what Liam's doing. Um, and for me, um, Liam Williams is a world-level fighter um, and he'll show that on Saturday. What have you made of kind of the rise and the growth of Liam ever since the defeats to Liam Smith? His progression, he's certainly become one of the most exciting fighters in the UK and probably one of the most kind of look forward for people one of the fighters people have most looked forward to watching of recent times well I mean if you look back at the Liam Smith fights I mean there was had he played that a bit a bit smarter he would have won that fight on you know with the cut um, but he's obviously you know and you know down at light middleweight I don't think he probably has, has had, he was as big Obviously, he's not as big as he was at middleweight. That goes without saying, because the weight. But I mean, in terms of punch power and, and and being able to sort of, you know, let himself go in the ring a bit more. Um, because since he's come up to middleweight, he's been an unstoppable force. You know, seven straight knockouts. Um, he had two eight rounders, and then since then he's had five ten round fights in a row. Um, Carrie Manchur and uh, Atlantis Fox. They're you know they're decent. You know, they're, they're good fighters. Um, Atlantis Fox. You know, no one does that to him. He's a good fighter. No one gets near him usually, and he absolutely annihilated him. He t you know, made him, made him look like, you know, that that was one of the eight rounders he had, to, you know, to test the water at middleweight. Um, and he's been an unstoppable force. Dominic King has done a fantastic job with him, um, and just you know, enhanced the work that Gary Lockett did, you know, at the beginning of his career. And I think the combination of those two guys and being in the environment and um, that he's in now, it, it, you know, it just makes him a guy to be reckoned with and I really really fancy being on that plane on Sunday night with Liam coming back and landing at Heathrow with, with, a, with a WBO middleweight world title I just can't see any other, uh, any other outcome Let's talk about the fight what does Liam have to do in it? is it simply just that come forwards aggressive style and nature we've seen certainly over his past five or six bouts or does he have to be a bit more clever because of the skill set Demetrius has himself with his boxing ability Well I mean it makes, makes me um makes me wonder what some people look at when they look at Liam because he holds the centre of the ring beautifully well doesn't just he's not just a steaming you know, doesn't just bury his head down and come forward he's not you know he's not like a bull in a china shop he's very very calculated and very very tactical even when Atlantis Fox went over the first time and was like backtracking you see Liam he was he was just about to reset himself and just hold the centre of the ring again but then he realised obviously he was on the wobble and he, he crashed after him 
Um, so it wasn't like he, you know, he sets, resets, and 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 look and and and, and evaluates the situation rather than what I think a lot of people think Liam Williams is, which is which is a which is a come forward, um, you know, wrecking machine. Yes, he has got that in his locker, but he can box, and he really can box. I mean, if you go back and look at them, watch the Mark, Mark Kefron fight, he systematically broke down Mark Kefron second by second, and eventually just went, you know what, you're done, get you out of there now. And I fancy that's what he'll do on um, on Saturday. Go and get me wrong. If he sees an opportunity to to take Demetrius out of there early, he'll be he'll, he'll try and seize it. So having said that, Andrade's a tricky tricky son of a gun, um, and he will be he'll have his game plan, which will be to keep it long, keep it rangy, and keep it um, uneventful. I think that'll probably be the um, the game plan from Andrade because. If he does try and start, if he does start standing there and trying try to trade, there's only one winner out in that outcome. Willie Hutchinson is part of that team. He's out here just to kind of reflect on his recent defeat to Lennox Clark. Going back to it, what did you make of it, Francis? And what's next for Lennox Clark? Because he obviously had the world's his oyster now. Yeah, I think we should probably probably talk about Lennox first because he came out on top. Um, great performance, you know, and I think you probably saw a, you know a 29 year old guy. He probably, you know, who's tasted defeat at a British title level before against Lerone, and he probably thought to himself, "Do you know what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fucking having that again." And that's that's basically what you saw. Um, Willie wasn't. Willie, Willie, Willie was in there, and um, we'll, we'll probably feel that he should have done better. However, I don't think anyone was beating Lennox uh, on, 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 you know, on, on that night. I think he he turned up. Um, uh, turned up at the. I mean, even the virtual press conference. You know, it was dev. Dev, Dev was on the screen, and Willie and Lennox were in different rooms. And even, even then, I thought, oh, right, I had a bit of a feeling about Lennox then. And I just thought to myself that he was, there's no way he was getting, that Willie was going to get the better of him. I just had a feeling um, all week, because, just because of Lennox's demeanour. However, Willie will definitely come again. He's absolute class, Willie. Um, he's a quality kid, um, quality man, I should say, sorry. And um, very much looking forward to seeing him come back. Um, next, what's next for Lennox? He's, like I just said, he's 29, British and Commonwealth title. He's not giving the he's not giving anything up. But who's there? Who you know? Who, who's there? So I, I'd, I'd like to see him build his rank. His, you know, try and get uh, on a world ranking run, um, and and see what we can do for him within the next you know 18 months, two years to try and maybe secure him that dream opportunity. Of, um, of challenging for, for bigger and bigger titles, not better. This British title is very valuable, uh, but for, for bigger titles on a, on, a, on potentially a world level. But it's you know it's very much stepping stones. You've got to look at correct fights at the correct time. Um, I like Fed or Chudinov fight. I think that'd be a good move to make for him. And moving forwards in time to next weekend, a brilliant, brilliant domestic clash between Denzel Bentley and Felix Cash. Talk to me about that one, Francis. It's very straight, uh, Denzel. It's like it's come out of nowhere almost. I mean, I mean, he won't, he won't feel like that. But I mean, like you know, 18 months ago, Denzel was this you know rough diamond, and now he's like looking like the, almost like the, you know the finished article. I mean, he, he jabs well, he he moves well, he's aggressive, you know. And and I think you know Felix is in for a tough night. Having said that, if Denzel's not at the races, we know what, how good Felix Cash is. Um, I think that, you know the quality of um, domestic fights that have been been coming out recently. Uh, you know, we look at Lennox and Willie. Um, I mean, even Sam Gilly and Danny Ball. I mean, that was a great fight. Um, Louis Lynn did a, uh, not domestic, but he put on a fantastic performance the other week as well. Um, you know, some of these guys are really taking the opportunity to shine um, when they get the, you know they get, they get that TV exposure. Um, and I fancy another barnstormer next week with um, Denzel and Felix. Francis, just a couple of other things I want to get your thoughts on and pick your brains about. One of those being thrillers enter, well, thrillers kind of move into the boxing market. We've seen they've picked up Fight TV as well now. Just kind of your thoughts on how they've gone about investing heavily into the sport and obviously they've got the Jake Paul Ben Askren fight after the DAZN show on Saturday. Just your thoughts on kind of their moves. Listen, if someone wants to put that much money in, into the sport, good luck to them. It benefits nobody but the fighters, which is what it's all about, the fan, you know, it's more exposure. That, you know, another avenue for the fans to be able to get in and watch watch uh, you know, top top fights, um, and it gives you know it gives guys another option. 
Um, uh, I mean, I can't get excited about stuff like, you know, Jake Paul and all the rest of it, unless probably honest, it's against one of our guys. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just, the way, that's just the way the world is. Um, you know, a bit of a hypocrite there, but at the end of the day, um, you know, Jake Paul against the very well respected, um, you know, UFC fighter. I, fa- I actually, I know who I fancy. I'm not going to. I hope it would be nice to see Jake Paul win, just just so that, like I said, that hypocr- hypocrisy coming out now. Maybe we can set up the Tommy Fury fight in the future. However, um, I don't think he, I don't think he wins. And obviously, there's a lot of heavyweight talk at the mini AJ Fury fronts. It's just from kind of your perspective, what? If any kind of involvement have you yourself had in any in, in the entire kind of talks and the negotiations? To be honest, that has been uh, heavily between my dad and uh, and and, uh, and the, man- the respective management teams. Um, so I'm I'm sitting on the edge of the seat like everybody else. What are your thoughts on kind of everything that's breaking at the mini? Are you confident yourself that we do see that fight take place this year? Listen, it, I you know I was asked that last night, and as far as I'm concerned. It, it deserves a crowd. However, wherever it lands, it's going to be huge. And um, I'm just rooting for, for Tyson Fury to, uh, to come through and do the business. <laughs> do you have any inside knowledge for us, Francis, before I press you more? <laughs> just, just, just wait and see, everybody. Because, uh, listen, it's going to be phenomenal, whatever happens. Well, you know, I, I, just, I don't think there's going to be a, a bigger fight. I don't think there's ever been a bigger fight. And I don't think there ever will be again for a long, long time. Um, you know, rumble in the jungle. Um, things, you know, it's, it's, it's a fight for the ages. And it will be one of those ones that in 30, 40 years, you know, you'll be seeing the, the posters for that fight come up at Sotheby's for auction for tens and tens of thousands of pounds. It's unreal, the hype and, and the, the reaction and the eyeballs and the money. Everything's going to be brilliant. And I think everyone should just sit tight, be patient, because it'll be well worth the wait. There's a lot of talk about where it will land and it seems to be that Saudi's the front runner from what's being kind of reported. How much of a shame do you think it would be if we couldn't see it over in the UK? You will be able to see it on TV. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think you just have to sit tight and see where it lands. All right, Francis, I can see I'm not going to get anything else out of you on it, so I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the day. Press conference is about to start in about half an hour's time, so I appreciate your time. I'm sure I'll catch up with you later this week. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Nice to speak to you, mate. All the best. <laughs> 